Hey there, Ride the Car Guy here, and today, let's talk about how the changes I've made to the Xterra have held up throughout the years. Now, my channel has been around about six years now, and in those six years, I've made a lot of changes to the Xterra, like a lot, a lot. And I get so many comments asking how a particular change is held up for however many years I've had it. And of course, there's also been videos where I make a big change and then I just don't show you the results. So my bad on that one. So to answer those questions, I wanted to make a couple videos. We're gonna have two videos. One's gonna be about the visual changes I've made and the other's gonna be about the mechanical changes. So let's jump right in and talk about the visual changes I've made to the Xterra. Now, arguably one of the best ways to update the look of your Xterra is painting the plastic. So let's start there. Now I've painted my Xterra quite a bit actually, and uh, I can tell you that it's generally pretty easy. I started way back on December 2nd, 2015, where I painted just the rear bumper. That first time I used an Ace Rust Stop paint, I believe it was called, Ace Rust Stop. And it was just a random gray color. I'm not exactly sure what it was anymore, but I can tell you that actually held up quite well. And I kept it that color all the way up until I did my facelift just a year or maybe two years ago. The only reason I ended up painting it is because I was painting the rest of the plastics with bed liner and I just wanted it all to match. I would have kept it if it wasn't for that. Eventually in September of 2018, I ended up painting all of my plastics and this time I did it with Krylon and frankly, that one was a mistake. Not only did I not really enjoy the colors that I chose, that's just, that's my fault, but it started to actually chip away and it sun faded pretty darn quickly. I would say within the first Within the first six months, it was pretty sun faded and it started to chip. That time I do believe I used a primer and I made sure to get the plastic paint and it still didn't hold up. I kept it that way all the way up to 2021, which is when I did my third and hopefully final refresh of the plastics. This was by far not only the best color choice I've made, but also the best paint job I was able to accomplish. That was January 2021, so that was about 15 months ago, and I have not seen a single spot of fading on this paint and not a single chip come out of it. I can't remember the brand of the bed liner I used, but of course I'll put it on the screen here. And I went through and I painted everything. The original bumper that I used the Ace Rust Stop on and even my bumper step in the rear. I was going to paint my uh, the door trim, but I ended up just pulling that off instead. I even went through and painted my grill and front bumper, and I don't see any chips in the paint where uh, you know any road debris came up or any rocks where it took any of the paint off. This has really been an excellent paint job for me. I even completed this uh, slightly controversial emblem swap and that's really held up great as well. Speaking of the front end, I've done two separate jobs to my headlights. I originally restored them back on July 3rd, 2016, and then I ended up replacing them on April 6, 2019. I cannot speak highly enough about headlight restoration kits. They've gotten so good. And once you do the UV protecting and keep up on that, they're gonna stay fresh for you for years. I made a mistake and I forewent the uh, UV protection when I first did the restoration. So they did start to yellow about six months to a year after I did the restoration. And that's why I eventually just decided to swap them out because I didn't want to use the restorer again. I resurfaced these headlights about two, maybe two and a half years ago, and uh, well, they're back to being yellow, so this time we're just gonna swap them out. I'm sure it would've had enough plastic to sand off another couple layers, but uh, at that point, I wanted to change the look of the Xterra anyways. For my replacement headlights, I just went with an Amazon brand. Uh, I'll put a link in the description, of course, but uh, I do like the way that they look. They have sort of a black bezel as opposed to a chrome bezel inside, and uh, overall, these have held up okay, I would say. That was April 2019, so these are almost exactly three years old in my Xterra, and they still look okay from a distance, but if you get up close, you're gonna see it does have some sun fading where the uh, initial layer or whatever that top layer is on them has started to peel off. I would still recommend these headlights. I think that they go really well with the Xterra, especially if you're gonna repaint and darken your grill and your bumper. Now, under our hood, we have our under hood lights. These aren't really that much of an appearance item, uh, being that it doesn't really change the look of the Xterra, but uh, it falls more under appearance than it does mechanical. I did these about a year and a half ago, so I haven't had a ton of time with them, but overall, highly recommended. They really are fantastic lights. They work well, and uh, I personally like the way that I installed them, you know, if I do say so myself. My only issue that I am already having is this switch is not very high quality. So sometimes you'll turn it on, it won't actually turn on, all in all, uh, you know, that doesn't really drag the kit down that much. You can get a new switch for just a couple bucks, but the lights are really where it's at. Now, much like the headlight restoration, the market's really coming out with some great choices for you to come and fix your own chips on your windshield. 
back on May 10th, 2019, I fixed, I think it was three chips on the Xterra and, uh, and I think they were older chips too, meaning they had contaminants in them and they were not fresh chips and they are still holding up fantastically. None of them have changed how they look, none of them have spread, none of them have yellowed. They've all kept their integrity and of course, the main thing being that they haven't spread, right? That's really all you need to know. The kits are cheap, they're easy to use and best of all, you don't have to work with those big companies that replace windshields. Because if we're being honest, those companies will fill chips for you, but they're far more interested in replacing windshields than they are fixing chips. I was in a rush and I went to, uh, you know, one of the companies we won't say, uh, starts with an S and ends in A-flight. And I had one of the chips filled by them and magically three days later, it uh, formed into a crack. The only real upgrade I made to the interior appearance wise was my footwell lights. And uh, I really enjoyed those lights for multiple years. I actually don't have those lights anymore. I mean, they're there, they just don't run. But the only reason they don't run is because when I was doing the headliner job, uh, I pulled the lights out, the center lights, and they were wired into that light and I accidentally tore the uh, wires out. And I told myself, you know, I might fix it again one day, which I probably will. But at the time I was like, screw it. And I just yanked the wires out and pulled them aside. I highly recommend it. I, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna fix that one day because it really does add that sort of like newer car feel to the Xterra and it's inexpensive and pretty easy to do. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about is the POR 15 paint job I did on the frame. Now, if you've watched my channel for many, many years, you know that this thing looked absolutely brand new underneath uh, for the first few years that I owned it. Then I moved to Michigan for one season, drove it in the wintertime, and sure enough, it's surface rust city down there. So I decided to try the POR 15 metal restoration kit, and I wouldn't say I'm disappointed, but I'm certainly not uh, blown away by it either. I did that job July 3rd, 2020, so it's been nearly two years, and uh, I'm already starting to get spots that are sort of coming through and kind of making it look a little funky. Especially with how much work goes into a POR 15 paint job, you have, of course, your degreaser, and then your metal prep, and then your paint, and uh, it's, kind of a, it's kind of a pain to do, but uh, it is, you know, I would imagine it is more durable than if I just went down there and rattle canned it. I genuinely think that there's really only one of these things that we've talked about that I wouldn't do over again. And that would be using the Krylon paint on the plastic. The Ace Rust Stop held up really well on the rear bumper. And I'm very, very happy with this uh, bed liner paint as well. I hope this helped answer some of your questions. If you do have any additional questions, make sure to scroll down and put them in the comments. Product links of things we talked about will be down in the description. Like this video if you liked it, sub for more content like this, and we'll see you in the next one.